Welcome to We're Not Wizards. We are the best, but not wizards. Enjoy the show! Constantly just going about in a vest top now. Oh, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Are you just, is that what you just Jeff keeping it now? Are you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and for those who don't realize, Jeff Capes used to be very well known. He, he, was he not like uh-huh. one of the first kind of well known kind of strong men who kind of, broke through the kind of the fourth wall and kind of started doing kind of TV adverts and televisual appearances because he could actually string yeah. a sentence together. That probably did help. <laughs> that probably did help because, yeah. I well, The thing is, I knew Jeff Cape. I don't know Jeff Capes, but my mum's mum yeah. had some weird connection. She, she did something to do with Wimbledon Tennis Club and like sports something or mm-hmm. other. And somehow via that knew Jeff Capes personally, and it was just one of those things. When I think this was even when he was still doing, I think he was a was he a shot putter? Yes, yeah, I think so. Um, I think when he was a shot putter, and then when like we first ever watched like World's Strongest Man, my mum would say like, "Oh, man used to know him." <laughs> Is it Molly Sugden's bridesmaids <laughs> kind of thing? Do you know what I love the fact is? I love the fact that, like, if I look at the stats on who listens to the show, predominantly it's people in America. <laughs> so they'll be yeah. they'll be listening to this and going, "What? Jeff Capes? Who's yeah. that? Molly Sugden's bridesmaid? Who's that?" They'll have no, they'll have no. And I like them to keep the enigma. I like them to go. I don't want to feed them on a platter. I'm not going to put anything in the show notes. No, that's what Wikipedia's for. I expect them to go out and look up what Jeff Capes did. I expect them to look about Molly Sugden's bridesmaids. I expect them to even look up shop putting. I don't think yeah. they know much about shop putting. Americans care about shop putting, did they? Yeah. I think it was like one of these sports that's like, uh, I think they had a agreement with the Russians at the time to kind of like, they had the, the Americans got javelin and uh, the Russians kept like shot putting. No. You know, who was gonna win the, the me- who was gonna win the medals. East Eastern Eastern Europea, they were the javelinners. Oh, were they? Jan, Jan Zelinski, he was a world record really? dad, still holds the oh. world record, I think. <laughs> I only know this because I happened to do javelin when I was younger. So I mean, that was that was one of my sports. So. This is we're heading down a okay. you take me down a path I can't follow Alex. And in fact, right, in fact, right, okay. another weird thing. I wanna know, know this. Gold, Goldie Sayers, do you know who Goldie Sayers is? No. She was the, she's been up until when she retired recently the leading British women's javelin thrower. Mm-hmm. Um, and I used to go to school with her. <laughs> she was in my school year. <laughs> so, I didn't yeah. realise that when you take people away from board games, actually, a lot of the time, they're far more interesting than anything to do with the actual board games. Because board games, by far definition, <laughs> far by more. definition, are quite dull. I hate to break this to you people. I know you're listening along expecting some cardboard goodness, but... Um, you know. Anyway, I don't think we're going to do an intro. Welcome to We're Not Wizards. My name's Richard. I'll be your host. Joining me... It's Luke Pryor. Luke's, Luke, it is. The wonderful, the Pryor. fantastic Mr. Pryor Convictions. Oh, no. It's not it's no. Not the wonderful and the fantastic one. That's a different Luke Pryor. Are you the... Um, <laughs> what are you? I'm the ignorant, selfish, horrible, <laughs> just downright evil, horrible person. Are Luke you Pryor, like that one? That kind of edgy, the edgy kind of one. I'm not even edgy. Are you the kind just, of person just, that kind of like just a scumbag? You just, just not. Ed- I'm not even edgy. Push the door into the face of an old woman, and say, "There you go." If when I when I can get them, yeah, yeah. Mark, I mean, the best yeah. place to do that you hang about Marks and Spencers on a Thursday afternoon because they've got it kind of ingrained to them that Thursday is still pension day, I think, and they'll be going in and picking up the salmon mousse. And you just go to hold the door open for them while they've got two bags of shopping and a kind face, and you just let it go. 
Just, watch just hold it. it. Just yeah. Just hold it long enough for them to think. Oh, oh what a sweet young bam. wham! Because <laughs> the older they get, the bro- the bones they just break. <laughs> so much I'm one, of the, I'm one of those people. You know, you know, the, you get those like fail compilation videos. Yeah. And they're supposed to make you laugh and everything. Yeah. I'm just there taking notes as to how I could set people up for them. I'm not laughing at all. I take it very seriously. I think very, I, very seriously. I think, I think you have to. I think. I mean, people do. I mean, that, I mean, that's probably why there's so many there. There's probably a network. There's a forum out Point. there of people to say, hmm. "Look, it's January seventh. You know what that means." Get out there with your squeegee bottle full of cold water and start spraying some pavements, folks. <laughs> let's let's ice these bad boys. Let's ice these such a bad beautiful boys. time of year. Such a beautiful time of year because <laughs> it gets everybody it's magical. Yeah. It's like so I, I look at snowfall in a very different magical sense than everybody else. <laughs> I look at it as just broken coccyx, you know, Struck grazed tires, hands, you know, burnt out rubber on tires, yeah. you know, frustration. Oh, it's great. It's just. Fabulous. People not it's being fabulous. able to go to the toilet. That's just that's <laughs> the best. The best kind of time. Um It's a wonderful time to be alive. I mean you're allowed to be nasty now, it's being edgy, aren't you? Because otherwise you're awoke. Don't know what that means. Don't want to get I into know. I'm forty one. I'm not allowed to know what it means. I'm not allowed to have an opinion anymore. You know. And if I dared to have one, it will be the wrong one for somebody. So I just don't have them anymore. I felt I, I can't even I can't even remember how you spell opinion, let alone have one. I, I don't I don't even want to I don't even want to Think. guess. I don't even want to, and and do you know what if I guessed, even if I got it right, it'd be wrong. Um, Absolutely. I felt old today. Do you know how I felt old? Go on. It's my cousin's birthday. Right. Do you know how old they are? Forty nine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you've got me. You've got me beat there. You've got me. Beat me? There. I don't. I don't. Oh no, actually, yeah, I do have forty-nine-year-old cousins. No, I have. <laughs> He's just like that. Yeah, I have older than forty-nine. I just wonder. Cousins, I think. Am I not past that? Do we call them? Do we not just have to call them auntie? Do they not kind of like? Do they not transition does, into kind of really like an point. auntie thing? I mean, could you really say that you've got a forty-nine-year-old cousin? Does that? Does that not? I think stupid? once you're old enough. Yeah. Once you're old enough to legally do everything you're allowed to ever legally do, yeah, like so you're 21 or above. I think that's where your last, yeah, that's your last threshold to get past. Used to be you know. 25 for each GV, I think licenses, oh, but there was that. Right. You might be right. All right, let's say 25. Let's say 25. 25 and up. Yeah, I think once you're 25 and up, mm. you don't have cousins, no, unless they're really sweet. less than 25. Yeah, unless they're less than 25. Yeah. Once you are 25 or they are 25 and up, nobody could be classed as a cousin. No. You're just an adult who happens to also be related. And I can see that because I see that automatically there seems to be this, like, um, my daughter's down from, she's down from uni. <laughs> she, she does universities on, and skyscrapers. Is, uh, I was going to say, is she down, is she down from uni? Because I'm guaranteeing she is not going to uni north of wherever you live, is she? She's go- does she? She's, does she? Uh, if she doesn't. She's going to no. uni in the clouds. Uh, she jumps from plane to plane, learns. She's like a superhero. Um, she, she told just, us she, she goes to university in the Goodyear blimp. But <laughs> she kind of we we kind of did the. Um, the, the the whistle stop tour you do is all the relatives and, and it happened that with like my both of my brothers were together in the same house and uh, so their nep- all my nephews were there and obviously it was his her cousins but all of her cousins were calling her you know calling her auntie because she's 90 <laughs> there was they were because he saw them you know it's a grown up grown up woman must be an auntie. And it's even though that's technically not correct at all, there's cousins. But again, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. I get, I get it more than once. A, not, you know, yeah. once somebody gets to a certain age, do they just automatically become an uncle? Because you all remember when you were growing up, there was like kind of like you had kind of like your your dad's kind of strange friend come around. And it's oh, like, yeah. all right, here's Uncle Derek. And you called him Uncle Derek. It was no, yeah. no, you know. My, my kids have uncles yeah. that are... In no way blood relation to me. <laughs> don't have you know. don't have Mark as an uncle, do they? Well, actually, I, yes, they do have Mark, <laughs> Uncle Mark because my brother's name is. Mark. Oh, right, well, that's well, there you go. <laughs> oh, do you mean do you mean yeah. Mark Jolly yeah. Green Giant Cook? Yeah, no, 
the one I'd no, mind. I'd, 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 I'd try to keep it away from him. <laughs> I would. I would. Because at the moment, I think if you if you kind of like drop anything on the ground, he picks it up and turns it into a convention. <laughs> As I just realised, I'm drinking out of a <laughs> mug branded I know. by Mister Cook. Anybody that <laughs> anybody that wears any or uses any kind of branded items, what a, what a what a shell. <laughs> What a tool! What, a <laughs> what an absolute, what an absolute idiot! Um, I noticed that um, you've been keeping your, uh, you've been keeping your winning streak entering. The, is that the, the yearly eyedropper challenge? You won a trophy this, year, this year. <laughs> Looking at you, I don't think I've seen so kind of gloriously well organised. Kind of paint racks for the for the uh, for the. It sounds like a police officer, but for the for the for the tape, <laughs> I'm. <laughs> Mister Luke going. Pryor is showing me literally racks of paints that he has. These little dropper paints are they Vallejo's and army painter ones that you've got the mixture. Uh, no, I got two thin coat, and then yes, they're all Vallejo. And it happen, well, there happens to be some mm. GW stuff up there. Okay. But then I also do have some speed paints, army painted speed paints. And then I have all the wow. GW contrast paints there. So, wow. Yeah. Um, as a, never stops. I've got painting questions. <clears throat> People are going to be listening along tonight. Love saying, like, look, 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 right. Oh, see I for, love painting see questions. See for ages, right? Everybody's went, oh, maybe if you didn't do the interviews as much and you kind of actually just had people on to talk about board games, then you'd be more popular. You might get nominated for a Golden Geek. Nobody said that to me. I said it in my head when I was crying on the toilet when I realised once again we hadn't been nominated. But I was about to say nobody said that to you, did they? <laughs> oh, nobody, nobody cares. So I don't get any feedback. I just put, or maybe maybe one of your cousins did. I put I this out like know. a cry for help. Um, but anyway, people talk about speed painting and stuff like that, and they talk about dry brushing and they talk about contrast paints and everything like that. Is it all a fad? I mean, do they really, really help? I mean, can you really produce... I mean, you can really produce some kind of wonderful stuff. What's your go-to weapon of choice when it's coming to kind of painting? What, what, What's kind of turning your head? You know, having you flick up your heels, making you say, la, sir, when it comes I'm 41, to... 41, I don't flick up my heels. <laughs> um... Unless they're attached <laughs> to, like, 20 kilos that I've just left it. <laughs> um... Uh, I so I've been painting minis right. since I was somewhere around ten. Right. Okay. You know, back when you used to get, and you still you still get them, but yeah, humbral enamel paints. Do you oh, remember yeah. seeing them in the little? Yeah. They look like a little proper paint yeah. tin, and nightmare. no shaking or stirring in the world could make that actually combine and... into two solid <laughs> to one liquid. And on the other side, of oil it. and pigment. <laughs> and on the other side of it. No cleaning, no cleaning fluid in the world could get that stuff off no. anything at all. You got that on the no. carpet, as I learned, right? You're having to get nail scissors to get rid of that stuff. <laughs> you get a new house to get rid of that stuff. <laughs> Burning. Not even a not not even a car a new carpet will do the no. job. No. <laughs> um, in fact, in a second we'll get to what we were asking. Yeah. But in thirty odd years or thirty one years of painting, yeah. I have never gone to the lengths to try and figure out truly how to use humble enamel paints. So that actually I might even try and do. I have no idea how to fully use them. I think as I get older and I realise there's a build-up of like coffee and various juices on my teeth, I might actually be tempted to use the white one. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Give myself yeah. that killer, that killer Ryland kind of smile, <laughs> which I always find amazing. With people that I've kind of like got the teeth the new teeth and they're oh. just like and do you know what it's like it's like they're learning to talk again and you see, it's amazing no i mean seriously you see them you see them on tail and this is again like you shouldn't like that <laughs> it's, I, f- yeah, it's... I thought i did quite well today <laughs> and you see them and it's like not being able to see richard right now I... He has put some sort of tape or blue tack or something, white tack in front of his lip. And yes, he I looks... I tack a fart like this. With very white lips. I've They're got like, very, very white just, teeth. Look at this. I feel like Esther Ranson. 
That's another great there one that just, Americans are going to have to Wikipedia. I don't give a sh- I don't give a Let them just let them take a photo. <laughs> take a photo. Take a photo, remember? Now you get racist now, I think. I like Janet Street Porter. <laughs> I'm just going to take that somewhere. Ah! Okay, okay. It's actually the cloth for cleaning my glasses, which I'm not going to have to burn. Is that what it was? So anyway, going back to your question. Yeah, going back to my question. So like I said, I have been, I've been painting for 30 odd years. Yeah. And one of the biggest revelations I had probably somewhere in the last 10 or so years, 10, 15 years, was the idea that unless you're painting towards a competition level, hmm. there is a point in which you just don't need to keep on painting it. You know, there's... You are just wasting time and effort to to the point of, of, you know, so few people will ever see it in its all its glory kind of thing. And all you'll end up with two amazing painted middies yeah. in an army that's, you know, not barely painted at all or probably undercoated. So I became, yeah, a big fan of, of the, the, the phrase tabletop standard, which is kind of the concept of if it looks good from your eyes to the table, yeah. you know, that kind of distance, you yeah. know, sort of three or four feet, then Men. perfect. That's what you want. Yeah. And and I I used to do a thing. Do you, do you understand what a yeah. zenithal prime is? For No. It, well, it's, so, if it's I don't you, know it, it's worthwhile kind of explaining it. Anyway, so, isn't it? If it's you say so, so usually you would you you base you spray your minis mm. in an undercoat yeah, yeah primer yeah now some people do it in black some people do it in white or grey depending on the finish you want to get <clears throat> one of the nice ones to do is to do it black yes then from sort of mostly above not from the sides and underneath you go for grey and then from really directly above you go for white yeah. so it gives you um but you'll be able to see it on the video, I'll be able to see it but oh oh, oh, oh he's killed I've it dropped him. Oh no, he's gone. Dropped, he's away. I dropped Doctor Doom. Gone. Um, oh, so I don't know if you'll be able to really see it, but he's, oh yeah, okay. So it highlights the low lights, as it were. Yeah. So it, it brings out the shade and the shadows in him. It looks like he's and standing under a street it... lamp. Exactly. Ah, yes. Okay, okay. Um, and obviously, you could change where that light is coming from as to where you focus the white. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, when you put a, then a thin paint mm. over. That will naturally allow that shading that you've already done yeah. underneath to come through. So that's a really big time saver. And contrast paints are a massive proponent in exactly that, in being a thin paint yeah. that already also does shading itself. Yes. But then if you exaggerate the shading with a zenithal prime, um, I used to do it with with um, like glazes and washes. Mm. Um but now with contrast paints, it does it even better. So I was already kind of using that contrast paint method beforehand, or what is now called commonly known as slap chop. I was going to say, yeah, slap chop paint method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, is it new though? I mean, is no, it, it's not new at it all. New? It's just is been it, given a name. Yeah, is it just? I don't one, get it. Is it just one of these things that is like everybody's been kind of doing, or there's been a, a group of people yeah. that have been doing it for years? And then, a large group of people. And then all large of a sudden, group. if somebody went, if we name this, then we can get it out. Because I, I have been, I'll, show, I'll go and get my, this is all great podcasting stuff. You lucky people not being be able visual. to say anything visual at all. You know, but, <laughs> you know, this is what you wanted. So anyway, right. So. Right. Here's my efforts, okay? I'll put these up here, Okay. Now, I think you... Did you send me some pictures of these a little while ago? Yeah. Oh, look at you with your space marines. You know, and I'm going to see... Me. Right? You've done a good job, people. I'm looking at a, a solid painting mini. Right. So I've got, like, my... I've got... I put dirt on the bottom of it. Don't know how mm-hmm. this camera... Right. So I've put dirt on the bottom of it. I've kind of basted it in a kind of a muddy, kind of, like, with irony rust. I've put mud on the various parts of the, like, the shield there and stuff like that. So... You know, and then I've used the kind of the contrast paints to kind of bring out the kind of the details. I was quite proud of that, but then I'm a bit of a, you know, <laughs> I'm a bit of an artist myself. Um, you know, I think. Do you know what the one I'm kind of the one really the one I'm most proud of is my boat. The boat. My boat. The boat. So he's got toys galore on these shelves that he keeps going back to. He's got models and all sorts back there. 
Because I got um, Armada from Mantic oh, Games. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now, see, for things like this, contrast paints are just They're such a dream. So good. Because they just, because, like, for, for, for when, you, when you're just getting into painting, like, when you get to small scale, so what, what, for the people who can't see what he's just shown me, yeah. he's just put, shown me uh, from Mantic Games, they made Kings of War Armada, which is a naval ships. Yeah. So, you know, and if you imagine, even the biggest of ships are, like, as long as your index finger kind of thing. They're not long at all, you know. But they're very detailed and they're really nice little minis, aren't they? Yeah, um, they're lovely. So to just paint those, that's really daunting when you're just getting into all this stuff. But contrast paints just make it so easy. Just all that, all that you know, the the, the contrast paint goes into the recesses, highlights all the planking and the decking. And it the, just looks lovely. You know, the guns and just beautiful. Yeah, really good. The only mistake, I, I wish somebody had said to me, look, if you want to do... My only problem with my Mantic stuff is that I didn't. I, I, I painted it after I put it together, which I think for certain I, things because of the intricacy of this take thing. Take the sails off. I would, you almost I would like have to take on. the sails off. You almost have to kind of like break yeah. them off and put them back on again, which is a which is a kind of like a difficulty. Painting it was a joy because it is. I mean, you are literally looking at. I've got four. I got four base colors here. So I've got my yeah. I've got my brown in my ship's hull. I've got the blue of the ocean. I've got the white, grey whites of the sails, and then I've got the gold of the kind of the decoration. So you put that on, and then if you put some contrast paint over the top of it, as you say, you get all the kind of the depths and mm. the kind of the shadows. I have been watching some of the sh- the slap chop kind of stuff, and I'm tempted to go back and do it. But my problem is that, you know, when I'm painting, I'm a bit of a I know and I understand the tabletop standard, but you get kind of like a bit of a perfectionist where you kind of go back and you keep touching it. And sometimes you just need to put it down and put it away. That's absolutely fine. But that's Mm. that's one of the good things about tabletop standard is, so like say that unit of Space Marines you've Mm. got, I could could see some bits that I, I would have said, like if you'd said to me, if you'd asked for critique, I'd have said, right, the next thing I would do to these would be da, 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 da. Yeah. And, and that's the point. You can get them all to that standard that you've got them to. Yeah. And then go, you know, then, you know, get the whole the rest of your army to that standard. And then you can go, right, okay, what do I, what have I learned now? And I'll, oh, okay, I'll do this to them. Yeah. Like, so there's like some skulls on them and stuff. So you could have gone, I'll, I'll make those skulls actual sc- ivory kind of color. Yeah. You know? So they just stand out a bit more, like do their loincloths and yeah. you know bits like little bits like that, just or just do some like edge highlighting to it, just to again, just to take it all to the next step. But that's what I like about tabletop standard is it it's it just takes you to a really nice level, mm-hmm. and then you can go right, okay, I'll I'll then I'll take it up and or like like your hero characters, you could you could spend all the time you want on those, you could make them the centerpiece, whereas the the, the the ninth model in a unit of twenty five models it it don't matter <laughs> you don't need to make it to, you know <laughs> you know it's you like don't care. you don't you need don't to be care. you know it's like your second and third kids the first yeah. one you caught and rule them <clears throat> you know second one as I've heard this said you're letting them play with knives because <laughs> you know what I mean you want to watch this you want to watch Terminator two you can do that right after Bluey we'll stick Terminator two on for you that's fine. You can even watch, and if you're bad, I'll make you watch Terminator 3. And if I catch you outside, it'll be Terminator Dark, Dark Fate. Uh, who knew that uh, the Schwarzenegger films could form the basis of, a ch- of bringing up your children? The basis of parenting. I know, I know, but there you go. So, no, I'm enjoying it. It's, I find it very zen. I kind of very kind of passing the time, and I think uh, I'm going to continue. I need to kind of get back into it because I've been playing kind of like a reasonable number of games at the moment and getting them to the table because I've been writing for Tabletop Games Mag, which has been incredibly good fun. And um, it's been kind of interesting. But I've, so I've got quite a few games to the table. What about yourself? What have you got to what the table yourself? recently in terms of games um, that you've kind of liked so... or not liked or... I'm in the middle of a campaign game, which has been really awesome because mm. I haven't played a lot of campaign games not well not not since I was an adult anyway. Yeah, um, and I had life, but uh, I said to a few of my mates, like, you know, I've got this game. 
how about we settle for like once every two weeks yeah we'll, we'll do a session of it and everybody was like yeah cool i'm up for that and so we're in the midst of iss vanguard <coughs> from awakened realms which is um kind of essentially mass effect it's that kind of world that kind of style um i've heard very very good things about it um that's am i right it's quite story driven very yeah very story driven yeah, yeah yeah i i don't think like i've seen when when we were learning you know how to play it and stuff i watched some of these like playthroughs of it and they did some of the what are called uh operations which mm. are like they're ones you can play as a one-off mm. Mm. um and i'm sure they're fine i'm sure they're fun yeah but i think they would lose so much of of what iss vanguard is about and it's that this overarching story that we're playing through mm. and the kind of struggle of, of it all because it is brutally difficult um, it is it doesn't hold your hand wow. at any point um so yeah i think you lose a lot of what what's appealing of it um what if you if you just try to do one-offs you know what kind of game is it because one of the things people talk as a campaign game but they don't actually say well at its core is it a dungeon <clears throat> crawler is it a skirmish game is it a mixture of no, the two or the three it's it's not even i mean it's almost like an efficiency puzzle because oh, right. way so each each planet you go mm. to so you see so you've got your big like folder which is your your ship yeah so you're sort of managing all your sections of your ship on there mm. but then and uh and you've got certain resources and certain things little things you've got to you know balance and 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 stuff on in, in that front but for the most part that's all fundamentally just kind of theme and progression um then you go down onto planets um and that's where all the kind of story is really coming through um and on these planets is always broken up into sections and you know it, you never know what it is you're there for yeah it might be a different thing each time a different sort of challenge that you're trying to do but the main thing is you've got you've got what are called section dice yeah so each person is kind of one of the fundamental obvious sections of a, a ship one's person security engineering science and uh, recon um <clears throat> and so they're all we're all slightly better at certain things um and then you have three different sets of dice red uh blue and green and they're kind of again they lean towards certain things and each of us have although we all have some of each dice some have more and stuff like that and we've slowly got more dice and those dice have different faces on them and stuff like that yeah and you're really just going around all the time doing all these dice tests that's all you're ever really kind of doing wow. but you they're also like those dice those dice are your like your life counters they're almost like your stamina and stuff like that so you're you're in this constant efficiency puzzle of like oh crap i can't move to this location because you need to spend a dice to move to that location yeah. um <coughs> steve you've got a jetpack if i if i use um one of my uh little uh the cubes that you some people have if i use one of those i could tag along with you so that will that will save me a dice and yeah like you, you, it's like i say so if it, an efficiency dice puzzle is the best way to describe it and when you if you play just one of those i think you'd be a bit like What's, oh, is this, <coughs> what's it about? Is, is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. But but because it's done, it, it, although fundamentally each one of the planets is kind of essentially the same, the way it kind of pulls you and pushes you and does things that just suddenly unexpected, you know. And it's like, oh wow, I didn't see it doing that. And you, so it, w without trying to obviously w make sure I could give any spoilers or anything, but yeah, it really does. It uses this very kind of basic system to do lots of different things, um, and it's yeah. If you get a chance to do it, it's really worth it. It's like, but it is it is a commitment. That and that's what's interesting about it because I do see people selling it on now, but I don't see people selling it on because they're saying it's crap, and I don't hear anybody kind of going, "This is a dire, dire game," or "This is not worth your time." It's just a, it's another kick. It's another kind of crowdfunding bloat, bloat kind of game. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, on the shelf. it's not yeah. though, is it? It's a kind of like it's a campaign. Um, it's like um, like Frosthaven, Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven yeah, I mean, exactly. and people people are talking about Oathsworn. 
I mean, we're all talking about these kind of big, huge kind of campaign games that are kind of coming out and people, I see people kind of getting rid of them and going, oh no, don't get me wrong, it's worth 200 quid. Yeah. But the issue but... is, is that I can't get, you know, me, Frankie, Billy, Bobby and Joe all together on every second Tuesday night. And it sounds like you've kind of got, yeah. a, you got that kind of crack that you've kind of managed to kind we've, of a commitment Yeah, to I mean, we've had, we've had plenty of times where, you know, where we've been like, oh, someone's like, oh, I'm away this work, yeah. week for work and stuff like that. You know, life's got in the way because we're all, you know, for the most part, married with kids and adults and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, but fundamentally, yes, we, we you know, we, we're all good, you know, and it's it's ticking along nicely, you know, and we've said, you know, we've we've all really enjoyed it and I've, uh, we've got some other ones kind of, you know, around that we're like, oh, okay, once, once we finish this. Yeah. We'll take a break for a little bit and just play some normal games and stuff, and then yeah. we'll start another one. You know? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. When all these people that have got like five or six of them, sitting I don't. On the yeah, shelves, I don't get that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and 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 they, I know they bought them with the best intentions. You do, don't but you? But then eventually, eventually, you sit there and go, Jesus Christ, there's like a, there's like twelve hundred, fourteen hundred quid sitting on that shelf. I know. You know, <laughs> because you just get rid of it. Yeah, exactly. And people will buy it. And the interesting thing is, I think there are people that will buy it hmm. with. The kind of the, the 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 road to hell, as in they'll know they'll think well I can get I can get all these people to play and then it'll sit on their shelf oh, for six months and then they'll be it'll go somewhere else. I, I, there's probably there should be some kind of study into how many different homes does like a game like this kind of end up to and and what percentage of that game is actually kind of played. And I reckon that the number of homes is probably going to be about two and a half to three, and I think yeah. the percentage of game that's actually going to be played. Like it's like 0. 10, <laughs> 5 or 10 percent. People will play a couple of games. The with you talking about the continual test, it reminds me of a game that I kind of want to get to the table, which I've had for a while called Unsettled. Oh, um, yes, which is yeah, Orange really try Orange Nebula, which basically mm. is, um, is uh, Orange Nebula do some fantastic. I've got, um, I've got there's certain, there's certain companies that I look at their games and I go, I am going to get this or make sure i play this game at least there's elder games that do all the catacombs games mm. it's when they put something out i'm just like i'm all over it i've got i've got literally a, a, a kind of a catacomb full of catacombs mm. uh, <laughs> and then i've got you know and then i've got like vindication which is the first one but unsettled is literally you go to like a sandbox of different planets and they each have their own kind of atmosphere or creatures or you know, um, kind of low gravity or high gravity, or there's acid everywhere, or there's some monsters that will kind of like tickle you to death and kind of things like that. Mm-hmm. And and you've got to kind of like based on teamwork and based on dice rolls and stuff like that. You've got to, it's like you said, it's like an efficiency puzzle, like you said for ISS. Mm-hmm. So you've got to um, you've got to kind of like uh, kind of make make it make it through to the end of the planet. So that's kind of like un- unsettled, obviously, in a much smaller kind of bite-sized it's, chunks it's, it's not a campaign is it no it's unsettled. more like tapas <laughs> in the so it's like it's like a small chorizo bowl of chorizo. it's a small <laughs> bowl of like chorizo and mushrooms and then the next bowl is yeah the dog thinks it's a campaign the dog game, clearly. very opinionated on this it's a campaign <laughs> game it's being very very good until the dog next door <laughs> The dog next door comes out. Do you know what it's like? Do you know that meme where the guy goes, what's your name? Oh. <laughs> and I'm not going to repeat it. I don't know what he means. Yeah. You know the, the one, one with shouting. Yeah. 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 What's your name? What's your name? That one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. you better not bring my mother into this. <laughs> I built that fire over hey, there. And they're from hey, Boston. Hey, Tony. <laughs> Boston, Boston is so brilliant. <laughs> Because they've got a pure Boston app, but <laughs> I built that fire over there. You better not bring my mother into this. <laughs> then do you know what I did? What? <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> so that's what happens. That's what happens. The dog next door comes out. It goes, <laughs> I know your name, but I'm just going to wind you out. And uh, and that's what happens. And that's why we get our, the poor, precious little kind of Arlo, who was sitting on, a, sitting on my lap before you joined us. So, and no, um, but apart from ISS, is that the only game you've been playing? Or you can't been getting anything? No, 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 no. Uh, been playing some Heat. Oh, um, good old Heat. Is uh, it? What else have we been playing? 
Is it good? I love it. I love it. Is it I good? Love, love, love it. What's yeah. why? I mean, if I've got flam rouge and I don't have flam rouge, but if I did, I've only I've played, played flam rouge to, like twice, but like before, <laughs> lo- well before lockdown. So I can't. Although I like flam rouge, hmm. I'm, I remember I was I kind of always struggled with it. I was I could never quite get it right. Right, you know, the little the the maths of mm. you 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 two you two cyclists and getting the most out of it. Um, heat, I've played now. I've played it with four and five and six. Wow! And then when we played it with four recently, and we used the two like automated uh-huh. ones, that worked so bloody well. Well, to the point that one of them came third. Yeah. Um, and like in that race, one of my mates was leading. No, sorry. The automated car came second. Mm. I won it. One of the one of the I was like at the end of the first lap. I was miles ahead. It looked like it was like I, I've got this wrapped Shoot up. It. There's no way they're going to get me. Yeah. And all the way through that second lap, they just just pulled me back That's in, amazing. just little by little by little. My mate in the first lap, after like two thirds of the way around, he spun out on a corner, and he was just like, "I'm done." I'm out. You know, wow. I'm never gonna. He was the one who came third. You know, um, and it just, oh, it's just it's such a great little when you just you, you you when you're pushing your luck and you're using your heat when you when you should use the heat and really push yourself when you, you know, when you gamble a little bit with the randomness of the stress cards and you get like this almost like a puzzle. Mm. You get like like a two and a three and a four corner or something like that, like a a succession of of slow corners with reasonable sort of straights between them but not fast straights so you you never get back up to speed but you want to get ahead yeah you know kind of thing so really trying to manage if you just nail it and you're like oh i've absolutely crushed it through those corners and then you get to the last one of the three and you're like oh screwed it (laughs) you know like two or three people come past again so we just we just it's brilliant it's just always like back and forth back and forth you know it reminds me of formula d I think it's very much like Formula it's D. It reminds me of Formula but it D. Just, it's a little bit more. Is there cards? Is there the cards? It's there? just it's polished. Yeah, yeah, it's just polished. You just like Formula D. Although you had the dice with only like a range. Yeah, it was still too. The ranges were still too big. Yeah, too, it was still too random kind of thing. And also, once you kind of got ahead in Formula D. The catch-up mechanics, if I remember rightly, just they just weren't there. And you, once you were ahead, you were ahead. Yeah, you know, yeah. You had to really screw it up to to get here. But they've just got it. They've got it just right. You know. Yeah. No, I'm just interested because I, 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 I still hear people talking about it. It was like when I hear people talking about Earth and people talking about um, <clears throat> was it as well. Arnak as well. And I'm just wondering how many of these are people just going, oh, we got to get this and have it to the table and then another one next thing you know it's kind of it, what is interesting is that over the last couple of months in the the kind of the the uh in the group the uk kind of tabletop uk mm. blah, 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 sales and thingy group um or the bt b and tcg or something b, like bg bgt and c uk btg and c uk i'll have a gin and tonic <laughs> Um, and a packet of peanuts, please. <laughs> it sounds like what you want. I'll have a bit of just simples. Um <laughs> And can I have a bag of nuts? And a pint of Coke, because I want to spill on somebody. Um, but I have seen certain things like Arnott kind of coming out for sale, but it seemed like everybody was like, whoa, heat's amazing. And then everybody still keeps playing it. And it's really interesting. It doesn't seem to have kind of gone down the kind of the, oh, I bought this and now I'm really... I've not really managed to mm. kind of get it to the table, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, the automate the automated races work so well that even when when we used them in that first game, mm. we had two races that night, mm. um, and all of us said like I'd I'd happily if, if like if it was just me and a mate, yeah, and he said he really wanted to play heat, yeah, we'd happily play heat. Wow, us two with four automated ri- drivers, it worked that well, you know. And there's enough interaction and stuff like that as well. Absolutely. Completely. Oh yeah, well truly. That's yeah. what you want. Yeah, just sort of duck it in and just trying to get that corner before somebody and stuff. Yeah, it works really well. Wonderful. Um what else have I been playing? What, what else have, have you been playing? Oh Foundations of Rome. Oh, okay. So 
My interesting thing about Foundations of Rome is I got... And also... What's that? <gasps> Marvel United. Look at how many. There's like literally... <laughs> so It's so much. You've got, <laughs> so you've much. got more Marvel United than you've got paints. Do you have a problem, Luke? I've got many, many problems. My wife has more problems because... <laughs> Her problem, my problems are her problems, <laughs> in in a weird sense. Right. <laughs> under my under my um my impression of Foundations of Rome is it's a fairly light ish game with big boxes, big pieces, and lots of table impact. Am I? I think wrong. Foundations of Rome is the best game that pisses me off more than any other game out there. Wow. Because it, and I. I hasten to use the word. Yeah. But it's near perfect. It's the near perfect gateway game, I think. Really? If gateway isn't a de- you know some weird derogatory. It's term really funny gateway is gateway stupid. is gateway a gateway um, term. <laughs> <laughs> Are you being gatewaying by using the term gateway? To me, yeah. right? Gateway was a supermarket from the 1980s I used to shop in. Oh, yes, it was. It and eventually it became Safeway. It did become Safeways. <laughs> and did, did it not get um, bought over by Sainsbury's? Who knows? Uh, Morrison's, I think. Was it Morrison's? See, Might have been Morrison's. It's only been recently since we actually had Morrison's up here. Um, uh, why is it perfect then? Why is it so good? It's just... Supermarkets aside. <laughs> <laughs> Crap supermarkets aside. Um, it's just so... It's fundamentally so simple. Mm. You know, there's only... In your turn, you do... Uh, one of one of three things. Yeah. So you either you either make money. Yeah. Buy buy a plot mm-hmm. of you know a a whatever, mm-hmm. or you put a building on one of the plots you've already got. All right. Um, and it just it, it's it then but then you get this brilliant so like as you know as I'm sure you know the there's little buildings and then there's big yeah, buildings yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. So when you're playing it, you you can replace a building that you've already got out there, yeah. but it has to be bigger than the building. The, the new building has to be bigger than the one that was there. Right. So you could replace two one space buildings mm. with one two space building, you know, or mm. like a one and a two could be replaced by one three. Yeah. Sort of so okay. as long as fundamentally the building that lands there is bigger than anything that was there before. <clears throat> so, and then you so see you've got certain buildings that just kind of, give you points every turn or yeah. certain buildings that make you make more money yeah and then certain buildings that um will be make you more money in relation to other buildings around them so as the game goes on mm. suddenly like if you put some of those out too soon or some of your bigger buildings out too soon people know like ah oh, he's never going to be able to move that building and that building's never going to change I'll put this point scoring thing here and I'll just keep getting loads of nice wow. loads of points. Yeah. But then suddenly it's like, but also it's a case of, oh, well, I won't put my point scoring thing there because that's only a two and he could move that. He could replace that. If he gets, if he gets G6, yeah. he'll replace it with a, with a so-and-so or whatever. So there's so much more game there than I kind of realized, you know, it's like a really, really fundamentally really nice, like it's, it's the game that you could teach anybody but but like somebody who really knows games and could like take games to that next step, yeah, gets everything out of it as well. They don't sit there just going, "Oh, this is, you know, it's nice," but you know. And then it's got expansions which can add more to it. Uh. But it pisses me off <laughs> because look at it. Yes, yeah, huge. And how much does that damn thing cost? Yeah, it's the like I say, it's the most accessible game that yeah. makes itself naturally inaccessible by making it massively daunting and terrifying in its look and its price. You know, that doesn't look anything like a game that everybody in your family could play because of because of what it is, you know. I just... saw I saw it with I saw it sitting next to Mosaic. Hmm. I looked at Mosaic, I looked at I looked at Foundations of Rome, and I thought, these are the same thing. Both civil both civilization games. Yeah. And the thing with Mosaic is it seems Mosaic's pretty light. As a game, it is. It's really simple. <clears throat> it's really light. Like, you know, it's, it's cards a, yeah. and building up scores. Foundations of Rome sounds like Acropolis got his big boy pants on. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's just like building on top. It's, well, yeah, it's all just about you know. I mean, you can you can be as like somebody who doesn't know how like 
you know somebody who couldn't wrap their head around like the relation stuff so like if if you're if you're not sharp enough to think that somebody is likely to put something there or or whatever and, mm. and see the see those little like combinations yeah you'll still do fine if you just went right well i'll just get as much population as i can and every turn every round i know i get a load of points from that so you could just go population population population, population yeah, yeah and you'll do fine yeah. you know you won't make a fool out of yourself you know um is it the kind of ga- is it the kind of game that you could roll up you could roll up anti susan and granddad and sit everybody yeah. around the table and they could just Easily. they could just start getting it within a couple of minutes like I said, there's, there's one of three things you do every turn one of three things and it's all laid out so nicely that it's simple That's you know? it's really simple and it's just so annoying that that huge box yeah and like each person has this tray yeah which has all of their buildings in front of it and as you take a building out yeah it, it, it being like its own little sort of basic version of a tetris shape mm. you know then you put it out on the board and stuff then underneath it will reveal how much mill money it might give you yeah. or stuff like that so that that becomes a that's a thing as well that's an important that's thing but that could easily be a double layered board when you take out a cardboard shape of that it, it just and it doesn't need to be this huge beautiful thing which is beautiful and it's awesome and it's fantastic yeah but it doesn't need to be. That's There's no reason it's not in a normal ticket to ride size box with tails, with a board yeah. and six six player boards. Wow, and a load of tokens for money. That's it, and a, and and a deck of cards. That's that's a one to H thirteen or whatever the hell it is. Did you see the um, the news? I don't know. Was it maybe was it Portal Games talking about the new? They've released a new style of. Uh, kind of meeple creation wood creation oh. they're kind of doing kind of wood mixed with natural kind of glues to kind of and it allows them to create shapes that you know the meeple wooden meeples the issue with wooden meeples is you can't kind of mold them so this is like a new technology which allows you to kind of mold mold a bit let me just see if i can for this is going to annoy me and i think it comes out like a stick of rock and you slice it you know it's it, like you a... can i think you can actually pour it as a kind of like uh Oh, really? Yeah, you can actually pour it and mould it and stuff like that. So, so I'm just, I'm, 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 it might be Portal, it might be somebody else, but um, let me just see. see, 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 see. It's going to annoy me, it's going to annoy me, it's going to annoy me. So have you never played Foundations of Rome yet? No. I know. I feel I feel for you. See, if you've been at Aircon. I know, don't. Where I, where I taught it to Mike the Pillock Pool. Oh, what? Pool got it? Yeah, he got, well, no, he got oh, to play my coffee because I took it. Because I love it that much, I made sure I had it at a convention. I lugged that bloody great thing around with one other game in a game bag. <laughs> oh, that's just yeah. I'm gonna. I'm just trying to find this. I can't. No, I mean, um, no, I can't believe that you've let Mike kind of play it, and that's just ridiculous. No, I'm not. I'm not. It's just I'm, just a two-player game as well. Just me and him. No, just me and him. Just beside yourselves. It was. Couple of candles skipping up and down the tables. Champagne. One rose in a vase. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. You would never have known there were three and a half thousand other people there with us. You're just <laughs> so intimate. <laughs> but that's what that's the best thing about board games, isn't it? Is that you can be in a room with several hundred thousand people. <laughs> you know. Oh, let's see. Here we go. Here we go. No, 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 no. I'm not going to find this. This is going to really, 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 really annoy me. I'm really intrigued because I've heard nothing. I'm really going to find. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to find this now. I'm going to have to. I'm really going to have to find this. And we're finding out. We're going to find it. We're going to find out live together. I like you so much. And we're going to find out live together because if I don't find out now, it's one of these things I'll not be able to sleep. And do you know who I reckon? And I think that I know who posted it. I think it was maybe Bez that mentioned it in one of the posts that they, she had posted. So I'm going to see if I can find it. And it's going to drive me up the wall if I don't find it. And it's going to go, mmm. This is where, do you know what happens is I refresh the tab and I end up refreshing kind of a squadcast and I completely cut off all kind of lines of communication and I'm just going to be like absolutely just beside myself. You're just still waiting, you're 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 still waiting. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is going to annoy me to have to numb the bed and then the bed. Right, come on, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm trying to think how many other people it could have been that did this. 
I don't know. It does sound like a very Portal Games. It does sound like a Portal Gamesy thing. I can't believe. Do you know? And Are I'm not you sure even... it's not like a Czech Games edition. Maybe it like is like an Ignacy thing. An it, Ignacy. Do you know what? Uh, Maybe it is Czech Games edition. Do you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to spell Czech Games. I thought it was Portal Games. I'm getting, I'm getting confused. confused. We're all getting confused. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let me just see. We're <laughs> look at looking this live. I'm googling. I'm <gasps> googling now as well. Bit of, bit of, bit of. Oh, are we? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. It's it's Czech Games edition. And it's a see, that's the reboot. I may have not known about this, but I still figured it out because I was like, I I think I do know who did this. Reboot. There we go. It's Czech Games edition. There we go. And it's wood waste with a binding material and it's then compressed at a temperature and it's granulated and then it produces kind of... Um, combines wood waste and recycling material in 80-20 ratio, creating biodegradable products including intricate board game bits. So there you go. It's made from... It's 80% shredded wood and 20% recycled binder made from 100% recycled and natural materials. So it can then be basically pressurized into any and molded into any kind of shape. Hmm. And it's Czech Games Edition, which means I'm going to have to go back. Which isn't, which isn't Ignacy. Which isn't. Ignacy is Portal Games. <laughs> we're so, we're doing I so... stumbled across the right thing with the wrong person. Yes. <laughs> and now we're going to have to, kind of, I'm going to have to try and edit this into some kind of, you know, do you? No, I don't care. No, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, everybody knows I'm going to fumble through. Um, games I've been playing because I might as well mention one because mm. I want to mention one and then I want to get on something else. Can well, maybe slightly different along the same time. But I've been playing. I was been playing quite recently. I've been playing uh, Rear Window from um, Funko Games from Prospero Hall. I've had the opportunity to play it, but I haven't played it yet. It's, I'd very much like to. It's very good. It's very fun. And people keep on calling it, is this the Mysterium Killer? And it's like, no. The person that was the Mysterium Killer is the person that you unmasked that did the killing in the first place is a Mysterium Killer. Um, I don't like this whole thing where what they do is they kind of like a new game comes out and they go, oh, is this the... Is this the code names killer? Is this this killer? And it's just like no, just you know, it's like here's another good game that sits in that genre a, and does it kind of very, I'm a very football well. Fan, there's is always <sighs> the next Ronaldo, the next Messi, the next Beckham, the next. It's always that the next you know, prima donna always... millionaire that likes to dive. Um, been watching the women's World Cup football. You don't see them. I haven't. You don't much. see them diving about the ground when they get yes, hacked by they another do person. Just you as don't. Much. They, they well, don't. not quite as bad. No, it's quite they're as quite bad. bad. They're not kind of like it's like watching. It's like watching like kind of people auditioning to go for an Oscar. You know, I'm surprised half the footballers aren't on strike with a SAG after a kind of strike <laughs> happening going. You know, <laughs> because they won't be able to roll about in the ground and pretend their legs being cut off and somebody accidentally tapped them. But anyway, um, rear window. Rear window. It's. Okay, so here's a game that I played with um, my middle two. The ante in the middle one. <laughs> She's going to kill me. But we played it once, and then straight away we played it again, and then straight away we played it again. So we played it very, very quickly in, in kind of like quick succession. And like in one night? Yeah, well, like literally, one, literally after one after another in an afternoon. Nice. So we you just, know it's a good game when you You know, that. when you just like, because... You've kind of got like the director role, and the director is kind of like, if it's if I'm comparing it directly with Mysterium, the I guess the kind of the role of the director is similar to like the role of the psychic or the medium handing out clues to the other players to let them decide. But what you're doing is you've kind of got like four boards, which pretty much represent the four the four um, the four times a day, um, and then you or the four rounds, and then you've got um, cards that you place you place down a total of eight cards and in those eight cards you're trying to help the people that because it's a cooperative game kind of you try to help everybody kind of figure out whether or not um who lives in that who lives in that apartment and what they're doing right so you might get some of them are obvious it's just a picture of the character there's nothing kind of it doesn't follow the kind of the mysterium abstractness if you know what i mean it's not like a picture of like a tower or a soldier carrying a pair of scissors or anything like that it's very much kind of like here is an ironing board here is a piano here is you know here's a here's a 
here's a couple of drinks, here's a drinks cabinet, or here's one of the characters just literally standing there. And then it allows you to, you've got to figure out who the character is in that particular apartment and what they're actually doing. So you get kind of like, um, you've kind of, you've got kind of like, they've all got kind of like different, kind of like different roles, the heartbroken, the kind of, the drunk, <laughs> you know, things like that. But you try to figure out from the pictures that you kind of put down. And then it's like a score. So at the end of the round, then you get a score out of eight, which helps you decide if, if you know what you've done is correct. Now, at any one time, you've kind of got like the, the characters from the film at the side that you can step in and they can, they can kind of provide kind of, they provide additional powers. So one of them will, one of them is to, you know, one of them like gives you an arrow. You put that arrow on the card and say, of this card, what is the most important feature of this card that the players must be doing? Or, is this card has have we guessed the right person for this particular card? And it's like a yes no answer. So it kind of work it works up. But what makes it interesting is that <clears throat> once you, I mean once you kind of play like a learning game, you can inter- also introduce like the murderer. So out of the total that you're guessing, you're trying to guess four characters and four kind of professions or characteristics one of the characteristics is swapped out for a murder. So you're trying to guess who the actual, if, there's a, if a murder has taken place. So then it becomes a case that it no longer becomes like a cooperative game. It becomes the directors literally trying to get away with, you know, there's been a murder committed in one of the apartments and it takes place over four rounds. So it's like a game of, um, and I'll be aging myself, you remember the game Mastermind? Oh, I loved Mastermind when I was Yeah. Playing, yeah. So you're basically, you're putting like your, you know, oh, is it, you know, does white go in column number one? Does yeah. green go in column number two? And then somebody go, well, you've got... Well, it was Wordle with colours. Yeah, pretty much. You're kind of guessing it. Yeah. And this is kind of like almost like kind of, you could say this is a kind of like almost like Wordle with kind of um, Alfred Hitchcock oh. characters. But what's interesting with the murder then is it then flips it on the head and the director is trying to make sure they're not allowed to completely mislead people. But they've got to try and get it so that they don't guess where the murder is happening. And it just it just becomes very fun. Because it, it kinda it, with all these games it always builds on what somebody's psyche is, what they're thinking and stuff like that. And so we played through it and we had, you know, we just had a laugh. We just had a good time. The best thing about it is when you get to the actual end of the game, it doesn't say this in the rule book, and I mentioned and and the uh, and I think this is one of the, the biggest mistakes that they made in the rule book is they should say they should say at the end of, now what to do is go through the game and explain why you picked those particular cards for those particular windows. Because then you get to see, well, I picked this one because that's obviously that person. But I picked this one because um they were the klutz. And if you look at this, there's a broken mirror in the background. And it says, Oh, but we picked we thought it was the heartbroken because there's also like a bunch of flowers on the top of the piano and we thought they were kind of like being sad kind of thing. So you get kind of like, um, you kind of get that mixer. So it kind of, it kind of works with it all. Is it a Mysterium killer? Um, no, it doesn't have to be. It just has to be kind of like a, a good game. But is it better than Mysterium? So I had issues with Mysterium. I like the fundamentals of what you're doing in Mysterium. But Mysterium, I think, is one of those ones that can a game of mysterium can be fantastic like absolutely epic yeah but then it can be one of those ones where the guy who's the or the gal or the person or the them yeah. um who is the what are they the spirit or whatever it is yeah i think first. it's a spirit yeah. get the medium yeah 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 so um they just the cards they get are just they just you give them nothing and you're just all you're just like oh, well that's it's got something but it's it's not the main thing and it's you know you just constantly feel like you're leading people down the wrong path you know so how they get around this in rear window is if you get a if you get a if you get a crap card then you've got the ability um to mulligan your cards by you play you play like a, a clapper board and that allows you to kind of clear out your cards and draw kind of new ones and also, you could, you've got the ability, you don't have to play every card face up. If you don't think a card is suitable for that particular or any of the windows at all, you can play it face down. 
So you're basically saying that card isn't suitable, but it also kind of gives a it gives a, a a further kind of weapon in the director's armory if they're trying to hide a murder. Because what they can do is they can turn a card which gives an obvious clue face down, and then how you mitigate that is with the extra kind of character powers that you can play yeah. once a game. You can then one of them is unveil a card that's been turned down. So it does get that, but yeah. My issue with Mysterium was it was like it's like me and me doing intros in that I start off saying something and then I take it in the intro of every show, I take it down to a different direction and eventually you know mention the guest kind of name. And it's also but the problem with Mysterium, Mysterium was like uh three two one with Ted Rogers. But he used to do that and when he, he didn't used ever to, do three two one. Do, yeah, he used to do three two one. He, he, he would he would go like that and it it was never three, two. No, you never one. stuck the beast. Everybody <laughs> used went... to do, and you used to do it to your parents, didn't you? <laughs> Mom, can we watch three, 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 two, two, one? And then, of course, when you when you were older, she went, "Don't do that because that's rude." So you would do it. You go the other way around. You go, "Okay, three, two, one," and you flip on the bird. And then apparently, flipping the bird to your parents is more annoying than sticking the visa up at them. Uh, apparently but anyway who knew? three two one ted rogers used to used to be this part on the show where they used to kind of get this ex- obscure clue and then tie it back into them kind of having a, a holiday or something <laughs> like that yeah. and it was absolutely amazing that's what i based my entire intro for the podcast on is the ability to spin a clue to come up with a kind of a guest <laughs> name at the end of it and that's how i felt sometimes with mysterium was you had as i say you had like a a night under a tower like holding a set of scissors or a sword or something like that and i was kind of like going oh uh does that mean i was uh stabbed and it's like no you <laughs> you were pushed out <laughs> of a, off a cliff and i'm just like this is rubbish so yeah. it's less abstract and it's good that's fun. good and i think i think the other thing i think rear window is going to end up kind of maybe in the long term Obviously, Mysterium's got a head start and it's a staple, but I think people who really like Mysterium are probably going to join. Um, they're probably going to join the kind of the um, the rear window kind of bandwagon. I, I don't see a lot of people play Mysterium anymore. I think it's kind of like, is it not kind of like one of the, we don't want to play, we're sick of Catan, can we play something else? And then folks say, what about Ticket to Ride? Oh, we've played that before. Well, what about Mysterium? Do you think it's in that wheelhouse? Oh, I don't know. I think it's close. If I gave if I gave a list of like top twenty games that people should kind of start if they were starting off, if people would consider them you kind of main you staples, put Mysterium in that, would you? I'd probably put Mysterium in that. I think it would be there. I think it, I think that it, is lofty. It's not lofty, lofty to say the least. Well, I, I mean, I personally don't. I personally don't think. You know, it's absolutely amazing because it can be too abstract but at the same time i would yeah. be I'd be surprised if it wasn't kind of people that put I, it in you there. know you're probably right i think a lot of people would put it in 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 that sort of category mm. of it. it's it's very easy to recommend because it's again it's one of these things fundamentally what you're doing is simple yes in practice not necessarily yes. simple um and sometimes in practice it, it feels like it's actively working against you. Like I said, you know, it's like it's, um, but it's it's one of those things. I think it's it's a little bit probably like a like Betrayal on the House of the Haunted Hill. Everybody knows, or it's very kind of widely known that sometimes you could just get some one of the ways that it pans out, and it just yeah. broken yeah. nonsense. Yeah, but every now and then, it's just it's, Chef's Kiss Gaming. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, just. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. It's that's fundamentally fantastic, and everybody loved it. And you'll refer back to it for years, years afterwards. You know, um, I suppose Mysterium does kind of sit in that kind of thing. When it works, it works so well. You know, um, I think everybody yeah, has a good it. time, and I can bring somebody in to play. I could bring anybody in to play Rear Window, and I could probably bring anybody in to play Mysterium. But in terms of if you're talking about is it a mysterium killer, in terms of maybe accessibility, because it's not as abstract, I think it kind of works a little bit better. I think that you could, I could just say, right, here's a clue, 
and then you would get people kind of going if they didn't get a clue they'd be it'd be like the obvious one that were kind of like um well there were, i i said klutz because there's a broken mirror in the background and there's a broken glass in the floor and it's like oh i thought it was heartbroken because there's like a series of flowers there and there's a bottle of wine that suggests that they're quite sad but it's not like the case where you're kind of like going oh but I thought it was this because there's a blue mermaid up there and there's the sun shining and it's like causing all the icicles to melt. And that's what I felt with Mysterium. It was kind of like you were kind of, and sometimes you were stretching. And if you didn't get on the, if you weren't on the right wavelength with the individual, then you could be lost. You could be at the end and it would be nothing to do with your fault. You yeah. could get the wrong cards, as you say, crap cards. You couldn't do anything with the cards. And you get stuck for a round while people are kind of also kind of racing up the track. Hmm. You know. Yeah. It's it one of one of the beautiful things that Rear Window and Mysterium definitely does is every now and then you 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 like you said, you, you somebody will say, Oh well I thought you meant and you're just like <laughs> you thought, no. you thought <laughs> what? What kind of <laughs> lunatic are you? So like when somebody sits there and goes well, yeah, but that had a picture of a so uh, a mug in it, and I when I see a mug, I think of brutal murder. You know, and you're like, <laughs> one of the what, uh, we had we had that because one of the pictures was like there's a there's a like a basically there's a picture of like one of the old style cameras on the tripod stands, and then next to it there was kind of like basically a whole banquet of food, and like we won the game, but we guessed cameraman, we guessed like photographer. And they went, no, it's like a, it's like a, 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 it's like a foodie. And it's like, why? It's like, a, you were looking at it. And it's like <laughs> the entire, like three quarters of the, the card is full of like a huge table of food. <laughs> and you went, looked at the, like the camera and went, right, photographer. <laughs> Final answer, lock it in. It's like the 1% club. <laughs> You know that kind of thing. Definitely yeah, missed definitely. The kind of. Definitely kind of missed what the obvious kind of clue was. Um, what about what about games you want to play? Is there anything at the play. moment that you're kind of? Because I've not got it here. I've not got it here. I've done, actually, I've got it downstairs, which is just a pile of rule books <laughs> that I've got to go through and learn. And I'm just like, um, yeah, there are. Yes, there are some games I want to play, but. Here is one. Let's see. Valbara. Valbara. I've had it for a little while off the recommendation of a one Mr. Dan Hughes. Um, and yeah, I really want to get that played. Um, I really want to get some more minis gaming played. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to play some mini games. There's, I've got a lot of stuff for a game called Dead Zone, which is a Mantic game. Uh, I want to play more Mantic Armada. Um, yes. Such more a good Star Wars good Legion. Fun. Yeah. Um, and uh, what was it? Me and Elliot wanted to play a game. Was it? Oh, uh, I want to play more Rumble Slam, which is a game I, I love very, very dearly. Um, Seems to be a, a game a you game bring from... out every kind of like six to eight months, I, and then you kind of like your your entire Facebook feed for nothing is just like full of <laughs> like kind of like and he hit him from the top rope and he took his <laughs> and he said and I'm the hospital now and there's drama behind it's the scenes now and it's all going amazing and I'm just like going this is amazing what? and then but I'd never hear anybody else kind of talk about it and it makes me See, think that it doesn't actually exist as a game except in your imagination. <laughs> Up in my noggin. Up in the noggin. <laughs> yeah. Fantasy WWF wrestling is just... I know. It's just such a perfect game. Because I think I'm just so, I'm so the right age for it as well. Yeah. Because it makes loads of references to the old Hulk Hogan eras and the Brett Tip Mad Hearts and the Ultimate Warriors and stuff like that. Sweet and then one. it makes loads of pop, pop culture references as well. And it's just, yeah. it's I love painting it because it's just a joy to paint them because they're just so silly but they're really nice at the same time you'll be able to do yeah, whatever so. you'll be able to do whatever you want you'll be able to do whatever yeah. you want personally i'm trying i'm trying to uh, look at and i'm determined to get this played dwellings of elderville yeah i played it once yeah i have played it once it's huge. i very much enjoyed it it's huge Everybody that I've seen talks about, I've played it once. I very much enjoyed it. And then I don't know what it is about it. They don't get it back to the table again. I know Mike the Pillock Pool. You have to look him up. It's famous Pillock. <laughs> don't know. He's not from Pool, though. 
funnily enough. <laughs> so he's a liar as well as a pillock. Um, and he'll be like that. He'll be fascinated to know he's getting name dropped in this show. And Dan's been name dropped. <laughs> we haven't even bothered Mike Delisio. Mike Delisio. Dan's happy place. Mike oh, Delisio loves dwellings of Eldervale. He loves it, and he he's does. he's it's one his of number the one game. Now, it is his it number not? one game, and it's one of the reasons that I yeah. kind of. I kind of, I, I was kind of. So that's one that I'm determined to get. It's a work. It's like a. It's. I think it's like a strange God. worker placement kind of resource it is a management game. battling kind of big monsters it's type like of game. Worker placement, almost a bit of action selection as well. If I remember right, mm. then you've got like tableau management, not tableau building. Yeah, but your tableau changes. Yes. Um, it's it's a lot. It's a bit of a lot of things, um, and you know I played one game of it at a convention last year. So, uh, a convention. Um, uh, the one fact what is now the Aircon West, and it was a it was a a convention in Telford that is now turned into an Aircon convention. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I played it there, and I really really enjoyed it. I could see why everybody loved it. Um, it's a big box. It's it's weird. It's I mean it's a, it's very weird. It's quite a trippy sort of weird fantasy world that it's in. You know, it's not. It doesn't try and just tick all the regular fantasy nah. tropes. No. Nah. You know, it tries to do some stuff that's different. It's, it's, and, it's just a bit of world building. You sometimes it doesn't, find it, it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't try and really tick any boxes <laughs> that all the things try and tick. It tries to sort of go, nah. well, here's the box, yeah. and I'll just move over here a little bit, and I'll put my tick four inches to the right. It's like it thinks you're playing squares, so it starts yeah. drawing dots next to the other boxes yeah. and then starts filling in its own boxes kind of thing. But it yeah. fascinates. It's, it's one of those things, please tick this box, and it puts a cross in it. <laughs> it's like, I will mark the box, but not <laughs> as you request it. I'm doing my own. You're lucky I even looked at the box. You know, I actually threw a dart to mark the box. That's why the hole is kind of there. It's another one of these games that I reckon if it was in a smaller box with smaller components and a lot more rules stuff was like cardboard and stuff like that, that I think a lot more people would play. I think it's another thing like Foundations of Rome. It's such a big box. It's got so many. I mean, the legendary editions kind of like it's like the legendary editions got bases you can put on the monsters, and it has this, the. Monsters. This is what I've played with, <laughs> and it's got like <laughs> you can put the just, monsters down, and they make their own sound. And... It's just absolutely fantastic. So I want to get. I've and surprisingly enough, the rule book is not big. It's it's pretty small and condensed. There's not right. an awful lot of stuff in the rule book, which kind of excites me. Um, so you've got it? I've got it. Uh, I need to get it. Did you look at Andromeda's Edge when it was on GameFound? I did not, no. Because it's sort of sci-fi oh. things of Eldervale. Okay. It's very much, it takes a lot of, I think, a lot of, of dwellings hmm. and put it into a new thing. So yeah, worth a look. Cool. It is late pledge. Late pledge is open on game found there you go i have done my business requirements <laughs> it's fair filling up i mean it's officially oh you're open you're open to just are you officially open now to people just oh kinda, yeah 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 we have been just launching products yeah, i mean that's time, been yeah. for some time now that you've been able to do it. you plan it yeah. unknown there's recently one that's kind of funded on there that kind of looks done really well very yeah, very interested that. um i think beasts uh, be- is it beast? Beasts? Is it um, is it a follow up? Are they calling it beasts? Or are they just calling it beast something well, else? Well, it's it's but there's an expansion to it, so it's it's uh-huh. a reprint of the original, and then it's um, yeah the new version of that. That's um, Shattered the, Islands. The amount of followers for that's Shattered Islands. That's it. Um, that looks like it will be huge. Um, I wonder. I wonder how much of that <clears throat> is off the bat of the shut up and sit down review oh, more than likely i mean they they are fundamentally one of those companies that sets the tone of uh they can make or break something um in fact elzer games uh doing catacombs 2 on game found soon enough the up and coming is is, is on there it's kind of interesting to see all these companies that you know have gone from the have gone from the the other the green the green circle the green k <laughs> jumped over <laughs> No, that's kind of cool. So you must be busy then. Are you, is it, you know, busy, busy, busy? Yeah, very, very, yeah. Up to your eyes and Yeah. 
Yeah, all the time. We we just always dealing with stuff and issues and things. You know, just people just you know always needing help for this, that, or whatever, and asking for lots of advice. You know, because um, we get like we've had a lot of companies who are big companies, mm. but have never done crowdfunding. Yeah, like um, like for, uh, I mean, one of one of I kind of one of my I suppose career highlights in a weird sort of sense was uh we we dealt with Keyforge for their relaunch of Keyforge from wow. Christian Peterson with yeah. his ga- uh, his company um Ghost Galaxy I think it's called Ghost Galaxy which when he left you know uh, left Fantasy Flight <clears throat> kind of finally passed it on um and he acquired Keyforge but he'd never done crowdfunding and everything and he didn't really you know and obviously Fantasy Flight had never done crowdfunding yeah. so it was like it really was a kind of whole new world to him um and I've got to admit, when I first i i got uh, i got given them as uh, like I, like this will be your account manager, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll look after you and stuff like that. Yeah, I was, and then I never thought I'd speak to Christian. I thought it was presumed I'd speak to somebody else, <laughs> you know, somebody else dealing with. It. And then it was like you know, I sort of sent you know my email out saying you know if you need anything, just shout. If you want to set up a, a call, we yeah. can go through some stuff, yeah. blah blah blah. And Christian Pearson's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. And <laughs> So eventually, I was—I knew I was going to be on a call with Christian Pearson. I'm like, Jesus Christ! I'm going to be on a call with someone I consider to be—he's one of the Mount Rushmores yeah. for, for board gaming, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. You know, board gaming wouldn't be where it is if it wasn't for half of the stuff Christian Peterson did. That's so weird. Um, and I've got to admit, I kind of thought, oh, is he going to be a bit? He's not going to be a—he's not going to be a particularly nice guy. He's going to be a very CEO you know he's going to be a very top dog kind of yeah you know nah he's just one of the nicest Ah. people I've ever met he's such a sweetheart he's super humble yeah you know really nice no no kind of airs and graces you know and just it was just so nice and like he's like given me so many compliments for you know the stuff that I've done for him and helped him with and stuff like that and I was like bloody you know that's a real awesome I'm you know real proud of myself for all that sort of thing (laughs) you know um and yeah, it was just so nice to to meet somebody who's well who you think, oh, this is like this is an uber cool person. But I'm not sure I actually ever wanted to meet you because I'm not really sure you'd probably actually be all right. Actually, you're really nice, <laughs> that kind of thing, you know. Um, and that's that's one of the things I've I've loved about working for GameFound is you know I've met so many cool people in this industry. You know, um, in fact, somebody we were talking uh, about who has been on your show recently, Seppi Yoon. Yes. <laughs> Just mad as a box of frogs. I love him. Yeah, he's brilliant. <laughs> he's brilliant. And he's coming back on the show. People. We're doing. We're doing. Yeah. Really? Why? Yeah. Why? Because. Why are you doing that? Yeah, uh, we're doing that. Your numbers. That's not going to hurt you. That's not going to do your numbers any good. You can't have them <laughs> twice. Of course I can. Because then people will think, "Oh God, he might be on a third time. Well, there's a potentiality. Just... I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, we're going to do our <laughs> Thelman Louise special. Um, <laughs> he'll be Susan Sarandon. I'll be Gina Davis, and there'll be headscarves. Yeah, but... And just driving about, talking about board games. It's going to be a life thing. I imagine Seppi is going through his headscarves right now to choose which Basically, one and, uh, and and it's under the proviso that um, he, he he learns how to make a burrito before he comes back on. Because, He's got to learn how to make a burrito. Yeah. Come on, Seppi. I know. It's not rocket science. It's not. He says he goes to a burrito design, truck. You design games for good I know. Sake. How you difficult can it make a burrito? burrito? How difficult can yeah. it be? But then you're a bit of a cook. <laughs> I am. You are a perfect yeah. cook. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, even even as a cook, you understand what's fundamentally difficult and what's fundamentally easy. And I assure you, wrapping a whole load of stuff in a big tortilla ain't too ain't rocket science. You know. I think we need. Yeah. I think his 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 ears are going to be burning when he hears this. One. I did. I told. I told him I was coming on. Did you? Oh yeah. well, this is going to be amazing. So yeah. Well, basically, no, but I mean, yeah, promise. he's Seppi. Seppi's one of these people. I I didn't really know Seppi. No, um, I knew knew his company, but I didn't I didn't know him. I hadn't stumbled across him on social media. I don't know really how mm. how I'd never I come across the character of Seppi. You you know, um, but just what a lovely bloke, and just 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 so many people like that. You know, yes, you um, the amount of people who I could sit there and go. You're fabulous. I'm hmm. so glad I got a chance to work with you. Versus the amount of people who I'd be like, I will deal with you as I have to deal with you. Um, <laughs> you I mean, the, the, it's like one percent to ninety nine percent of fabulous people. You know, um, 
and it's just yeah it's brilliant awesome. it's great awesome I wouldn't, wouldn't change it for the world awesome awesome well it is time to disparate because i was like going oh, i'll be an hour then we'll run out of things to say and then i was like i was thinking <laughs> potentially we could just keep going part part one of volume one part, part one volume one <laughs> Oh, we did do an episode before, but it no, was we've ages. done. It's like, yeah, I mean, I think I when I went away and then came back, you were one of the first people I went. I'm going to get you back on I again. Was the yeah, first you one back. yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's true. It. This might be my third. Game. This might yeah. actually be your third go. So, if people want to find you on the internet webs, where do they find you on the internet webs? Where does do we? Where well, do we find anyone on the internet webs nowadays? You know what I mean? Not on Twitter anymore. If I no problem. No. You might find me on SpaceX or whatever the hell it's called now. <laughs> The porn channel. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not on Pornhub. I got all of that taken down. Um, <laughs> wow. You know. <laughs> um, you can find me on Standard Tabletop, which is my YouTube channel, which you very rarely see me on. But I do. I do intend to do more. I want to do more. Um, yeah. It's just all yeah. the time and time and effort. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, I've got a new camera, which yeah. is nicer, and it definitely worked better, and I got a better setup and stuff. So. But other than that, yeah, you find me on Facebook. You'll see my Facebook. I'm always around. He's always about hanging about, painting yeah. things. What he does is he runs about, goes into shops, down again. <laughs> goes into shops, yeah. steals stuff, primes it, yeah. paints it, puts it back on the shelf again. People are just amazed. Yeah, no, and then it sells for more yeah. money. So it's a win-win yeah. sort of situation. Doing everyone a favour. And when Luke's not doing that, you'll see him. I was going to say in a vest, but he's probably in a vest all the time now. Just in a vest, <laughs> lifting stuff. Doing the Jeff Capes. <laughs> then putting it back down again. That's where you'll find them. If you want to find us, go to the internet web, search for We're Not Whistles. You'll find us in all the different worn out faces, places, bright and early for the daily races. And um, on our blog, uh, we're not wizards.co.uk, on our podcast, we're not wizards.com. Um, we're just floating about like um, <laughs> it's kind of like that kind of thing that people all scramble away when they see it in the swimming pool. Um, a wee job a wee on job. the surface a wee, a wee Scottish job <laughs> and if you like what you've heard tonight then please drop us a rating or review on your podcast catcher of choice and as always don't give us 10 stars because I am fabulous, I am in print <laughs> I mean I can imagine people like actually we'll put this one in print um <laughs> Because, you know, we don't want to make him any more big-headed. But at the same time, don't give me zero stars because it'll make me cry. Give me something in the middle like a five because it's average. And I'm just a little bit average. But the person's not been average. We might have been here before. It's, it's Luke Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the guest. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Always lovely. Two more things to do. First thing is to remember we're many things, but we're not wizards. Are we wizards, Luke? I think I am. Okay, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'll let it go. It's like it's always a matter of time. And yeah, why not to slip through the net? <laughs> they always do. Yeah. <laughs> Surrounded by wizards, I'm like, you know what I mean? I feel like thinking of starting up some kind of school. <laughs> um, and the second thing is to say goodbye. So it's a goodbye from Luke. Say goodbye, Luke. Goodbye. It's goodbye from me. Remember, stay safe. Roll sixes. Make something awful. Get yourself. Tell us if you've listened along tonight and any of the games that we've played. You've been playing those games. Tell us about those games that you've been playing because we want to know. But until the next time, goodbye. A wizard is never late. <laughs> Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to.